natural numbers are the numbers that you first learned about as a child. Zero, one, two, and so on. <laughs> uh, the natural numbers are familiar to you. You use them all the time. And so because of that, uh, you've probably never stopped to ask yourself the question, what is a number? For a mathematician, this is an important question. Uh, one of the reasons for this is because starting from the natural numbers, mathematicians can build in precise and deductive ways increasingly complex mathematical objects. From the natural numbers, we can build the rational numbers, or the fractions. And from the fractions, we can build the real numbers, otherwise known as decimals. And from the real numbers, we can build most of the mathematical universe. The functions we study in calculus, the vectors we study in linear algebra, differential equations, topological spaces, etc. And so this picture that I've sketched for you uh, implies that, in a sense, the natural numbers lie at the very foundation of mathematics. And so the question of what the natural numbers actually are becomes important. Are the natural numbers the irreducible particles out of which all mathematical matter is built? Or are there even more fundamental mathematical objects? The answer to that question is yes. And the fundamental objects out of which the natural numbers themselves can be built are called sets. The idea of a set is pretty simple. A set is just a collection of objects. Sets are abstractions that allow us to move from individual objects to collections. Those collections then form new objects, which are distinct from the objects that they collect. So, for example, the set of all letters is not itself a letter, it's something new, it's an alphabet. Curiously, one of the most important sets for mathematicians is the set that contains the fewest number of things, the empty set. This is the set that contains nothing. But even though the empty set contains nothing, it's not itself nothing. It is, in fact, a thing. And the empty set is exactly the thing that we need in order to define the natural numbers in terms of sets. Let's start with our first natural number, the zero. We define the zero equals the empty set. After all, if our goal is to define the natural numbers in terms of sets, what's more natural than to say that zero is the set that contains zero things? With this, we've defined our first natural number. And we can use that to define the next natural number, namely one. This defined as the set that contains one thing, namely the number zero. So we've defined two natural numbers now. And maybe you can see where we'll go next. Two can be defined as the set that contains the two things, zero and one. And this pattern continues. If we want to see these numbers explicitly as sets, then this is what we would see. Numbers defined as sets of sets, nested within each other over and over again, eventually terminating with the empty set. This might seem a little weird, but you know, most things do seem weird if you look at them closely enough. In any case, what we have here is a mathematician's answer to our original question, what is a number? Our answer, numbers are sets. This operation of gathering together individual objects to form collections, and then calling that collection a new object, this is the operation of sets, and it's one of the most fundamental and foundational operations in all of mathematics. Sets are what allow mathematicians to build structure, and sets are what allow us to build everything from nothing. Thanks.